over here, we are modeling a, a, the pro proposed extension for a harbor in Western Australia. And we are using 3D irregular waves for this model. What we are looking at is the stability of the stones and wave penetration into the harbor. Over here is the original harbor, and here we have the extension which reduces the wave action in the uh, original harbor by a great deal. This is what we call fruit modeling. And for fruit modeling, you use various scales. And we here are using a scale of 45. We could use scales of 100 or even 200 in this basin, which is one of the best in Australia. When we use fruit scaling, we are looking at the ratio of forces between the inertial forces and the gravitational forces. And therefore, when we use fruit scaling, we, we neglect the frictional forces or the Reynolds forces. What we've got here is a, uh, our fleet of wave rider boys, backup wave rider boys. We uh, operate a network of wave rider boys for the New South Wales government. Uh, the boys are typically uh, 10 to 15 kilometres off the coast in about 80 to 100 metres of water. Uh, the data is sent back to a nearby receiving station where it is processed and then it is sent via email back to our central server here at Manly Hydraulics Laboratory. The data then goes up onto the internet for public access and also is distributed to the Bureau of Meteorology for their assistance in issue of uh, storm weather warnings and coastal water forecasts. The, boy, uh, the history of the boys is that they were first um, deployed back in 1974 at the first site off Port Kembla. And uh, over the years, the network has evolved from, from about four boys with, that have been in service for about 30 years through to a network of about seven, uh, of seven now. Um, the, the data is extensively used for, by the New South Wales government for coastal investigations, and this could include um, studies such as storm erosion on beaches, coastal process studies. The data is also used extensively for the design and the assistance in the repair of coastal structures, for example, breakwaters along the New South Wales coast and seawalls and revetments. The Wave Rider Boy network that we've got here at Manly Hydraulics Laboratory is, represents one of the longest records in anywhere around the world for a particular long stretch of coastline. The data is becoming more and more important given the emphasis on cl climate change at the moment. The record uh, that we have from the early years can be now compared to recent data and so we've got a good baseline of data that can be used to monitor any changes in wave conditions. One of the important aspects of the boys is that they can now record wave direction and one of the, the issues that's going to um, is, that is going to be important in the future is any subtle changes in wave direction may have affect beach erosion dramatically. For example, beaches that have uh, experienced, uh, that do experience extensive beach erosion now may in fact not be so affected in the future if there is small changes in wave direction. Conversely, if a beach that is now in a healthy state and doesn't suffer much in the way of a beach erosion may in fact be impacted in the future due to changes in wave conditions. So it's important that this data is monitored into the future and uh, it's, it's very good to have that extensive database going back right to the 1970s that we can compare uh, existing conditions to historical conditions. Just out of interest, the wave climate on the New South Wales coast, while not extreme, we can have significant storm events, particularly during the winter months. The average wave heights along the New South Wales coast are around 1.5, 1.6 metres, uh, averaged over the year. We, we have recorded very extreme events. Um, we have caught, recorded maximum wave heights along most of the sites in the order of 15 metres during uh, fairly severe storm events and the average swell size during those events would be in the order of eight metres. So although we uh, have, can have relatively calm conditions, we certainly do have extreme events. And these are the events that obviously the, the uh, users of the wave data are most interested in. They're the uh, big storms are the, the events that cause a lot of beach erosion and damage to coastal structures.